Hello, we are back with another charting analysis. I know it's been a little bit. Um, this time I decided not to do a custom chart, but more rather um, analyze some of my personal favorite and Amira charts over the years. I personally have a backlog of some of my favorite charts in this game that I eventually want to cover. But uh, yeah, we're going to start off with uh, Wedding Crashers S6, which is um, arguably a very tough S6 in the game. But how just because you're making an easy chart doesn't mean it can be engaging. And I think Wedding Crashers S6 perfectly illustrates this. Um, and yeah, let's just watch the video and I want to explain why some parts of Wedding Crashers just work so well. Sunny made this, I didn't know that, that was easy. I couldn't explain it at the time when I was watching the video, but basically, this could have been just a boring hold part, but instead Sunny immediately tries to introduce that as you're getting into harder levels in this game, you have to keep in mind of music complexity. He's not just charting the general beats that casual players would listen to, but rather focus on the class. Super smart. Just the general, if, I mean the chord notes. This is immediately what I'm starting to like about this. You go from a jump, note, jump, note, jump. You have this constant motion where you just, note, jump, note, jump. It's super flowy and super, super like energizing. And you're just like, it's very upbeat and that works really well with the song. And it doesn't just, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It brings other things with it like jacks and a little bit of note arrangements to make some streams back into the same jump note jump which um if you saw in the beginning is exactly how they let up this too see the jump note jump it's now as it repeats it's the same thing but mirrored and super just overall great execution just leading to like what the song is going to be we now get to i guess more into the verse right you have these eighth notes of the triples. It's a great introduction with uh, level six and sevens having more eighth notes. These triplets, uh, just, you know, nothing. It's a little like, you know, it, it gets harder, but like not overwhelmingly harder where it feels like a progression like the song and the BGA. And okay, we, again, it has the same triple notes. But this time, um, it doesn't, you can't be extremely comfortable either. Now, when you do the triple, it's hard to read. And you see this red note, right? So, you use right, left, right, and you have to use right, left, right. It's like a jack. You're using the same foot. Which, for new players, that feels weird. But afterwards, it just becomes natural. And I think it's just a great introduction to... How notes won't always be straightforward to hit. Yes, in pump, most patterns you use the same foot, but a lot of charts do have this where they repeat the same notes sometimes. Example being Conflict S17, Tentamen S20, um, and so, so forth. And it mirrors it on the other side, it backs into the jacks, and this it goes back into the jump swing motion, and it just repeats itself into the when you get into it. Just, it's perfect. This is so well made. I can't tell you how simple but yet effective this whole charting sequence is. And I know it might seem like I'm like exaggerating. I, if I was the charter, I could do that too, right? But then explain like the the charting decision of having the two jacks, the top top right jack, top left jack, and then like a fun stream. It's extremely well thought out and just very well made. More jumps. Continues the jump flow motion that's so well done. It gets a little bit harder, you see? As the song progresses, you have bottom left blue, the uh, diagonal jump, just showing how it gets harder. And this sequence here is super tough. You have the up and downs where people, I mean, the player has to go up and down very quickly at eighth notes and then you have the three jacks such a like awesome cap it's extremely smart charting decision continuing quarter notes kind of gives you a break slash like you know kind of keep you engaged but not as hard now because it's building it up for 
the bridge to get harder and then the final chorus. So this is like your break in a sense. Jump. It always has that sort of flowy style of the jumps and the in the eighth notes. Like right there, you have the eighth notes. It's gonna be another jump, right? Another jump and an eighth note or stream. Exactly. And now you're nearing the finale. You're gonna see the girl, right? And instantly right off the bat, you have the stream leading it up to it. So it's like the song is telling you like, hey, it's still going. It's still gonna be kind of hard. That's a hard stream for like S6 players. Stream and then the triple A. And now, now you're like, oh shit, let's let's pass this hard six, okay? The, the, you have the eighth notes. Just more jumps, just getting progressively and progressively harder. Wow, this is really a display. Oh my god, wait, <laughs> I didn't, I never thought this chart was that hard. I'm actually. Is this too much of a spike? I'm thinking about him, Nora. These up and downs for a six, huh? Wow, this should really be a seven. But anyways, it still blends itself well to be extremely exciting and challenging too. The, the streams into jumps, to quarter jacks, to breaks in between. Although I will say now that looking back, I think this is a little bit, I think this is too much of a tad diff spike. You have this tough stream and then you have like Tentamen S7 up and downs. I think it's a little bit too much for the player. This is leading into the climax, but but this part by itself is probably a lot more harder to execute and more tiring compared to the ending. Up. It mirrored up and down. Wow, this <laughs> can't describe it. Okay. And I noticed this with the chart a lot. It has a stream into the triple notes. And I know for me when I first got into it, the game. This was very difficult for me to read. Stamina-wise, it's not bad compared to everything you've done up to this point. So in a sense for a new player, maybe it's not the most readable. There's four notes and then you have to triple it. So I expect a little pause break, but you have to just keep going. Obviously I'm better at the game now. I can read that as just all eighth notes, but maybe what the charter could have done was made that bottom left blue to a top left yeah you do use more movement but it would feel more natural reading wise again you might read those three notes there as separate just triplets like the ones after here but anyways just super good you have the triplets the streams it's such an interesting he could have the uh, sunny could have look there's like the two boos that are used just again the little things the little things like that just add so much flavor. You could make a boring S6-7 chart, but this chart has so much personality from like the little things, and it's just so well made. As you uh, finish the song, yeah, just truly such a great chart. And uh, yeah, I even though it's been many years since I first played this, well, not many years, like a year, over a year, I still fondly, like, have put Wedding Crashers with high regards because it is just truly one of the best easier charts in the game. Like, period. Um, Yeah, I think I pretty much got everything I wanted to say. Like, I literally think as a charting objective-wise, I think the S6 is probably the best out of the set. And that's with me playing the 16, the 18. The 10's still pretty good, actually. But either way, I'm just saying, like, God, the 6 is so bussin'. So, uh, yeah. If there are any charts you guys want me to review, feel free to let me know in the comments. I still have a lot of official stuff I want to eventually get to, so more videos on them in the future.